Well, today is Thursday, and so not really a busy day. I mean, I woke up at 11 o'clock, got up around the house at noon, and then at noon I left the house with the Jeep for its first road trip, proper road trip, um, into a drive down the roads, country roads, to my friend's house, David's house, my machinist, and just show him the truck for the first time, but also like show him mods I've done and also the mods I want to do with him, with the machine shop. And so did that, and I brought my Warren hubs. Hubs have a little issue with them. They bolt up fine, but the, um, there's a special nut required on your, on my truck had, all, okay, all the Jeeps have double nuts for that main bearing. And so put the flange on, it hits the last nut. So you need a special nut that Kaiser really sells for $27 for a pair. And so I need that special nut and special washer to put my hubs on. I'll buy it, it's fine. And then it's a, my hubs are a auto lock hub almost. So it's a nice SEO feature, a little extra money to spend on it, but it's a auto lock feature, I guess. Get that little pad sitting in there and I don't know. It's heavy, it's cast. So I'm gonna use them. That's fine, I paid for them. They fit fine, so I need the special nut, special washer. We can't figure it out, so. There's that. So it's now I know what to buy, and then they'll work. Don't have to machine them, try to cut them off. And, uh, these are more used for the scouts, uh, but they'll fit this and work. So that's that. And after I this house, I'm already halfway to the gas station. Like, I'm going to drive this truck continuously in the back country roads. I have the triangle in the back, so I'm good for township roads farm plate so i'm good and so i brought two jerry cans to get topped off it's 10 gallons there and then the main gas tank i think 13 15 gallon tank factory i want to label um top that off too and when i went to the pump i squeezed the trigger full full power and instantly splashed back out of the pipe and all right you're full i know you're not and so i did the jerry cans first then did the truck and then it's like it had issues like well, how much gas is in there? Well, I didn't have my stick with me. I use usually the broomstick to shove down the neck to see how full it is. And so I didn't have a stick or so. So I went to the woods right next to the gas station. Like the guy, he's like, "Why are you leaving your truck and running off in the woods? Like, with your axe?" I brought my axe with me, and I chopped down this little sapling tree, and shaved off the branches, and then got that stuck it down the neck of it. Oh, I see. Yeah, I have a gas gauge, doesn't work. I have a new sitting unit, new gas tank, but up here, this gauge is messed up. As well as my cooling gauge doesn't work either. Um, that just reads 100, flat 100. I do have an extra one in the barn that will fit this one, but the fuel gauge one, I don't have a square one. So, probably do custom, I guess. Um, yeah, so I stuck down there, and like, like, I have like two gallons in there, I can kind of roughly measure two gallons of it in the tank and so i need like 10 gallons in there so i just squeeze the trigger and again it's splashed back again but it's okay let's do half trigger pressure and these filler necks are designed for the older fuel pumps back then at the gas stations very slow feed these new cars can take it at a faster rate so that's why and that's my friend john that's why the same thing with his dodge power ray and same deal but it won't it won't it'll splash back so you gotta do half trigger so a little more painful holding it for 10 gallons but put 10 gallons, 10 gallons in there and about 10 and a half gallons there's a guy pumping up his atvs as well pulled up and he says uh you're leaking fuel on the bottom i know the new gas tank so i'm not worried about the hole in the tank there is one uh, but i figured out i know my gas lines are all rubber until kaiser gives you the fitting for rubber hose not for a thread for a st steel line and so it's leaking out of that it's like Oh, hey, it's full. Um, so, hey, it's full. All right, I'm good to go. So I just, you guys, it's a little bit of a hill, so I rolled off the hill and then started the Jeep up. That way, I'm starting up. Dripping fuel here. Exhaust is right there. Like, I'm not wanting to risk that next to the gas station, so I let it roll and then bump started it. And then it's like, yeah, I could fix it here, top off. It's, it's tight already. I made it tight. When I installed the gas tank, and it's pretty hard to get to without dropping the tank. So, like, and it's full tank. It's like, no, I'm going to leave the gas station and ride down the road. They're going to stop, make two more stops. And after those two more stops, the John's house, 
uh, it stopped dripping. And it's still a full tank with the stick. So there's a, there's a limit to the gas tank. That's fine with me. So that's that. I got full tank of gas in the truck. I got two jerry cans of fuel, 87 octane. That's something. I do have my lead additive I could put in the fuel if I like to. I probably will. So I figure out the right math for it, how much ounces. Uh, so that's that. And then that's it for the hubs, the fuel. I stopped by John Sash, show my truck, and sell his power ring and sell his military Humvee. Took pictures of it with my truck. Did that. That's about four hours in a day. Um, driving wise for the truck for a proper road trip. I don't know how many miles I put on the truck, but for sure the odometer was not reading 700. 706 right now. No. <laughs> it was like. I don't know where it was. I definitely put 30 some miles on the truck so far. Down the route, up the thing, up that way his house, up that way gas station, and all the way back, and then across opposite side dirt roads that way to get the John's house, and then all the way back this way. So I don't know, 30 mile round trip, I guess. Um, the only issue with the truck was still the door opening consistently, not one of the shuts. Driver's side, uh, my winglets, windows for AC, they're fine here, but when you have doing 50, 55 miles per hour, which I was doing, GPS and the speedometer said so, of course, the wind kept pushing these this way. <laughs> like, I want AC, I keep opening it, so I need a, I don't know why it's not sturdy enough. Like that side, especially plus, uh, that's that issue. Uh, the next issue was, again, the gauges not working for the fuel or the coolant. But it's been maintaining about 170 with my temperature gun, 170 temp, which I'm, okay, I'm good with, 160, 170, so I'm good with that. Uh, so the only major noise, only issue was dry shafts. I can hear the dry shaft squealing. As you load off the gas, you just hear pure dry shaft. It rolled down the hill, down the road at 50 miles per hour with that no gas, um, no gas like engine pedaling wise. I'm not hearing, I'm just, I'm just hearing universal joints move a lot. I know this angle back here is bad. I'll fix it this winter. When the body comes off the frame, power cut the frame, fix the frame, and fix the suspension, re-arch the leaves, put new shackles on it, slight lift for the 32-inch tires. I'll handle that stuff on the fall hits, so two or three more months. So I'm okay with it for the rest of the year. Um, that's the only issue I had. And another thing is I don't have brake lights hooked up. But what I do have is uh, running lights in the back, but the top are turn signals and such. So I just turn on my full headlight switch and it turns on the running lights. So I'm using that as my brake lights. I mean, I mainly have to control the switch for brake light, but it's really running lights, but they don't really know that. So two cars behind me, that's my brake lights, pulling a switch. So that works. Get their attention and that's me. I pull over and wave past me. But though I'm doing pretty well speed on speed. It's doing 50, 55 cruising. I didn't hit 55 peg it or max it, but 55 for a hurricane engine, I'm good with that. Um, what else? Other issues. That's about it. Uh, steering, no death wobble at all at the high speed. Uh, the only death wobble experience is on four wheel drive. Obviously, well, four wheel drive, hard to steer, and it wants to wobble on you in the low range. That's that depth wobble. Not at high speeds, though. Uh, suspension, I guess it's fine. St steering wheel, slop. Not much slop at all. So I'm pretty good. Truck's doing pretty good. Uh, the next adventures of the truck for trips is a car show. Again, it's probably the same distance to David's house, a little bit less. Um, guy's named Gotschlings. He always has an old car show. And then right down the road, the church has a car show the same day. So I usually do the church first, so I get a nice spot for parking. And then most people car show, and then there's a nice pig roast going on. I just skip the pig roast and leave, and they go to Gotchlings right after that and have much better lunch there. Um, so two car shows in one day, so that's the next thing we're doing here soon. Not sure what's the date. Um, and then my friend Dave, who I visited for my machinist, He's got his 1953-57 CG5 uh, Colorado Jeep, and it runs now. 
He's working on body work right now, body work and some minor stuff on the engine to where he can drive his Jeep. So his brakes, suspension, steering's all done, all restored, done well. Like since I met him, he's still working on it. Um, so just body work left, body work and a few engine stuff. You know, what's, what's your goal? So that's what he's working on and he wants to drive that to the show, which is only a mile and a half down the road for him. Worst case, I'll just tow him the rope. Um, and then for me, I'm bringing my 1945 Bantam trailer. My friend Justin, who I bought it from, he's done using it, so I'll get it back. When I get it back, I'm going to work on tire swap. I bought tires for it, and then I'm going to get a wire harness to the truck so I can tow the trailer with the lights working. And then also, I need to put cherry wood decking and cherry wood sides of the trailer. So I need to get that all kind of ready for the car show. Not for this car show, it's fine. But that's coming too. Uh, things buying for the truck. I bought stuff last night on Amazon's Prime Day yesterday. Nothing special I bought. Um, I just bought bed hooks because, like, this big bed, where do you hook stuff to? I mean, once my wood sides are on, that's some form of put traps to. But there's no hooks or tie downs for this bed. And I don't want nothing huge, something simple, sheet metal screws or rivets holding it on. And so I found, like, a beer bottle cap, pop can uh, thing you crack open. They're metal, thicker. But that size roughly, well, you could fit a regular hook through. One of these, you can fit through them, the big hole. There's a small hole for like a rivet um, or a sheet metal screw. It's super small, super, super simple. I found a, bit, a couple other ones I found, but they're just a bit too bulky. Um, so I'm going to have some ideas where to put them. They're small enough, they're kind of low profile. I'll have wood decking eventually, but I don't know. Five bucks for a dozen. Some form of tie down. Even if I only put them on the outside, that's fine too. Ratchet across, that's fine. Something to have tied down. So I got those. I got a new knife, uh, bush knife. I always use pocket knives, so I want to get a better bush knife from Matt Graham. So I got that, Carndo knife. And there's two more things I bought. I don't know what I got, but Amazon Day, bought those. Uh, the next thing to buy for the truck, again, for the hubs, need special nuts and washers, buy those. Um, single stat, figure out what's wrong with it. The light's working, the turn signals, and brake light's working. Uh, brake lights. Why are you on? Alright, we go outside. Not sure why the air's on, but yeah. I don't know, just electric, electric, electrical stuff to buy and for the stuff of the hubs. That's all that's on my buying list to buy the truck for a while. Money is now starting to get short for work. Well, almost a month of no work right now at work with a strike, so money's starting to get desperate now. So, hang up, that's it. Well, I did buy new straps too. My jerry can, you need a straps, and so genuine jerry can traps like 25 bucks each and i found some more just on average same measurements same design it's a little more modern like hey it works it's better it's half the cost i spent 12 bucks for packet two and a little extra longer you can just trim the size for the length of the rope so i got straps too for jerry cans got those i don't know that's it it's a little thing to buy Alrighty, that should be enough for the video. I'm gonna get uh, some yard work done. More. But that's all. Update.